Welcome back to Pine and Pine Podcast, and this week we've been joined by Paul Devlin. Cool. So, what an incredible career, really, first of all, Paul. Uh, 500 league games. Can you start by taking us through sort of your journey into playing for Stafford Rangers, yeah, yeah. sort of the progression that you got to get to there? Well, I mean, when I was at school uh, a long time ago now, it, it, we only had a school football team in, in the first year and the last year because it was, it was in the years where the teachers used to go on strike. Mm. So uh, I had no intention, didn't want to be a footballer. Um, you know, I wanted to be a chef. So when I first left school, I trained for a couple of years, getting catering qualifications and working part, uh, working uh, uh, in, in, a, in a hotel in Birmingham and just playing football part-time when I could. Sort of drifted back into it. When I was 16, 17, with a with a, a local Sunday league team, um, was always in and out of the team because obviously working shifts and that I couldn't get a, you know get there regularly. Then one day we played a cup final over in Tamworth. I came on for half an hour, did quite well, and there was a scout there from Tamworth, uh, and he asked me to sign for their youth team. So I went and signed for their youth team at about I think it was about 17 and a half. Uh, progressed into their first team, played for several non-league clubs around, around the Midlands area. And then in 19, I think it was 1990 or 91, Stafford Rangers bought me for a, for a couple of grand who were in what, what was then the conference. And I had the, just over a season there and then ended up going for trolls at various clubs, got knocked back at Derby, got the knock back at Oxford, um, went up to Liverpool, I was at Liverpool for six or seven weeks, that's my claim to fame, I played in a reserve game in Ian Rush's combat game from an Achilles oh, injury, oh, wow. so me, me and Ian Rush played up front at the Hawthorns, <laughs> and we and we won, and I, God rest him as well, Mel Reese was the goalie for yeah. Albion Reserves that night, and that, that night, and we won 1-0 and I scored the goal, but Liverpool actually had me up and down for about six or seven weeks, mm. um, but, it, but, it, but it all fell through, um, went and trolled to Leeds, hated Leeds, didn't like it at all. Uh, <laughs> oh, we all. That, that, well, that they actually wanted to sign me Leeds. When I, and then I, I came back from Leeds and signed for Notts County. But it was funny because I was in still living at home at the time. Uh, I'd signed for Notts County. And Howard Wilkinson actually rang me and gave me a bollocking um, because I had a week up there, came back, signed straight away from Notts County because I didn't like Leeds. <laughs> and uh, that year, Leeds won the old first division and Notts County got relegated. So it was a it was a great choice, wasn't it? But <laughs> I loved uh, no, I loved my time down there. And obviously, it was Neil Warnock gave me my chance. Yeah. And, you know, I went from sort of being a, a Sunday league substitute to playing in the old first division as it was then in about, I don't know, 12 months. Yeah, and then right. obviously, that was the start of it. Then, you know, Neil, Neil took a chance on me where Oxford said no, Derby said no. Uh, obviously, I had interest from Liverpool, Leeds, but he actually he actually stuck his neck out for me. So that that's where it all began. That's brilliant. What was it about Leeds that was it just the the place, the sort of around the club that, that it didn't feel right? Or yeah, well, I went in. I mean, it was the middle of winter as well, and it was like I was in digs right by the ground, and it, there weren't the nicest digs, and it was just you know just dark and depressing. And to be honest with you, the first thing that put me off was when I went into Harry Wilkinson's office. He saw me, he's very dour anyway, Howard. He, he sort of looked me up and down and, and said, well, I thought you were bigger than that. I thought, well, hang on a minute. You've, you've sent someone to watch me and you've asked me up there. So that sort of made my mind up within 10 minutes yeah. of meeting him, to be honest. And I, I was up there for a week, played a reserve game against Newcastle, did really well. And they invited me back, said, can you come back next week? We want to we have a closer look at you. Uh, I went back on the Friday and I signed for Nuts County on the Monday. That yeah. actually made me mind up to, to sign for Nuts County. Yeah, uh, and, the, and that was the last year of the old first division. What was um, what was Neil Warnock like then? Or was he uh, the character he comes across? Or yeah, he was. He was I mean, let me tell you. I mean, I was. I had two spells with him, obviously at Sheffield as well. Yeah, he'd calmed down a lot at, from when he was at Nuts County. You know, I was a youngish manager then at Nuts County, and he was very volatile to say the least. But a character, you know, I think he'd taken Nuts County from struggling in the old third division all the way up to the first division in, in consecutive seasons. So, yeah, you know, you knew where you stand with him. It was one of them. You were, you were terrified to go in the first team dressing room. It was, it was definitely one of them at, at, at that sort of stage. But no, I found him great. You know, I didn't have a long time with him at Nuts County, unfortunately. You know, he gave me my debut against Coventry. Then I was involved again against Luton. Uh, and at the end of that season, when we got relegated, wrongly so, I believe, though, 
that you know that they got rid of Neil because he, he'd taken them all that way. He, he turned down jobs, I think, from Chelsea. Uh, really? to stop, yeah, he turned down a Chelsea job at one stage to stay with Knotts and you know got Knotts from the third to the first. And then when he got relegated, they, they got rid of him. Which mm. I think you know, if you look back in history now, I think that's the highest in certainly in uh, yeah. since you know I can remember. Yeah. You know, we're going back, what, 92? How many years is that? 27, 28 years, whatever, 30 odd yeah. years, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, they've been on a they've been on a steady decline and who'd have thought that they'd actually be a non-league team now? Yeah. And, and you look at Warwick's career since then as well and it, it speaks for itself. It looks like he's even, even at what age is it now? About 72 or something? Yeah, he's, he's about 72. I, yeah, listen, I mean, I, I know Neil's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but, you know, I, I found him great. I think that... that Two, you know, the two best managers I've played for. I mean, it's on, on, you know, probably shouldn't say best, but the two ones I enjoyed the most were were Neil and uh, and Steve Bruce. Mm. Had some great times under them, but I, lo- I loved Steve Thompson and people. I was fortunate with David Kendall. Uh, so, you know, I think you try and take a little bit from all these managers. But yeah. Neil, I mean, you, you look at the longevity of Neil and uh, you know what he's done. I think most most promoted manager or something like that. Yeah. You know, you, you love him or hate him. You've got to, you've got to have respect for the jobs he's done at the clubs yeah. he's done down the years. Definitely, is it his proper character as well? It's it's lacking that in it in the game. I think a, a good character. Yeah, he's, you know, I think if you it's very rare that you'll find players that have played for him for a period of time that that don't like him. You'll always mm. get players slagging because you know if he doesn't want you or you've not done well for him, he, he lets you know he doesn't. Should yeah. coach coaching. But I think if you look at the players that have had, you know, prolonged spells with him, they all speak very highly. Great man manager, great motivator, not the greatest coach in the world, but he always used to get good coaches in uh, wherever he was. But, you know, um, he's done brilliant, hasn't he? And, you know, very, very much sort of, uh, you know, I've got a lot to thank him for going back to 92, giving him a chance. Yeah. So from, well, from uh, Stafford, uh, from the trials and everything, you signed for Notts County, and then making your debut, I think it was age 19. What's yeah. that moment like for a young footballer sort of coming on, probably for one of the biggest crowds that you played for? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, nerve-wracking, because right? it was the end of the season, so it was red hot. Uh, I was 19, you know, I could, always had a bit of pace and could run a bit, and I was playing against a certain Kenny Sampson, who was about 37 at the time. But at that time, he was England's most caps. Fullback, maybe even defender, I think he won 86 caps. Yeah. But it was about 37, 38. So I'm thinking in my naive brain, I'll just run, I'll run him ragged today. I'll try and kick him a little bit and outrun him. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think I had a kick. You know, I was full of running and energy, but he was just too clever for me, too good. But the two, it was it was comical, really, because the two games I was involved in right towards the end of the season, Coventry and Luton, we actually won both the games. Uh, but we, st- we, we still ended up obviously getting relegated. Yeah. But it was, you know, a big eye out. Now you're going from from non-league football, Sunday football, and you're, you're playing against England's most capped fullback. Mm. So, uh, you know, you, and I always remember as well, my first game for Nuts County was a reserve game. We used to play Wednesday evenings and in the reserve league. And I played against Stoke. And I was playing down the middle that night and I, Noel Blake was marking me. So all of a sudden you're coming up against Noel Blake, who, you know, was a man mountain. Yeah. I'm 19 and he's, you know, 700 games, Loads of clubs, Birmingham City hero as well as as he is down there. You know, you, you, you grow up quickly, but it was a, it was a brilliant transition. And, and I think looking back, it was probably the perfect club for me to go to, Notts County, because I ended up making over a hundred first team appearances for them. At one stage in the championship with the likes of Mark Draper, Michael Johnson, Gary McSween, Tony Garner, people like that, we just missed out on the playoffs one year by a point uh, through an own goal, the last minute at Derby. And I often think if if we'd have won that game, because the team got broken up after that, and that really then was the, the start of the decline, and that's cancer. But I had some great times there, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, brilliant. So where did you get the sort of hunger for the game from? Because I know, well, going a little bit back, you said that you weren't really bothered about being a, a professional footballer. When you made that debut, is that what really gave you sort of the hunger to go on and sort of kickstart your career then, or...? Yeah, I think as as I was coming through the non league setup, really, all of a sudden you get you get in a few quid. I think yeah. it's twenty quid, <laughs> twenty twenty quid at Tamworth, and then I think my my mate four, forty quid somewhere else. 
Then all of a sudden, I'm at Stafford Rangers and I'm on 200 quid a week. It was like, <laughs> I'd, won, like I'd won the lottery. <laughs> so then that, that was really, as, as I store, stepped up the levels of non-league and, and you got people telling that, listen, you got to chat. It was always, there was always questions about my, uh, you know, getting sent off and my temper and stuff like that, which, which, which plagued me a little bit as, mm. as, a, as a young player. Um, but yeah, then I realised, you know, I've got a chance there. So I knuckled down and I, I really did work at it. You know, I was, I'd, I'd train hard and I'd, I'd do extra training. Uh, and, I, and I gave it me all when I realised I had the shot. And then I think one of my biggest sort of things that I'm proud at, uh, proud about was in, in 15 years as a pro, I was never out of contract, which mm-hmm. means I was never in a position where oh, nobody wants me. What am I going to do? Yeah. Um, so I take more pride in that than a lot of things, really. Because you get lads that have a couple of year career, three or four years, or yeah. every year they're on a three and it's, you know, they've got to try and find a club and all that. So that 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 is one of the things that I do take a lot of pride in that in 15 years I was never out of contract. Yeah, definitely. definitely. It's, I mean, it's nice it's, to be wanted, isn't it? And yeah, and yeah, yeah. Proves that. <laughs> a lot of the ex players we've spoken to, they have had like a two or three year career as well. Yeah. And we were saying that actually just before you joined and we just got into the lobby preparing for this. And we've had Warren Barton on, but I'd yeah. say after Warren, without a doubt the most successful career of any player we've had on, I'd say, yeah. so far. I mean, we've only going three months, Paul, so it's not the yeah, yeah. accolade. But <laughs> <laughs> without a doubt, you look at the, the teams you played for as well. Yeah. And the longevity, like you say, you didn't just have a season here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, you had long careers at Sheffield, Birmingham, yeah. Watford, yeah, like yeah. top-end clubs. Um, so you're absolutely right. To not ever be out of contract, that's the biggest proof, isn't it, in the pudding when you're constantly being desired, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at, I mean, it draws me mad a little bit. I look at the likes of Raval Morrison, who've got, you know, probably yeah. more ability in his, his little toe than I've ever had in my career. And, you know, it's this club, oh, they can get the best in that club, that club, you know. And, and I think it's got to be an attitude thing. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think if you speak to a lot of managers, they'll all say that they had their moments with me and I could be a bit volatile but they knew that I'd always give 100% and that more often than not, I'd, I'd do a job for them. So I think it's a bad attitude. And I think obviously hunger and that, you know, coming from non-league, not being one of these kids who was cocooned in an academy from 10 years of age where everyone's had their arse wiped and never had to do anything. You know, I'd gone out and worked. I'd, I'd worked in a hotel. I'd worked on building sorts. I'd, I'd done stuff like that library. Yeah. So I think that made me more hungry thinking, hang on a minute couple of hours training in the morning, getting paid for playing football. I, I, I'll have a bit of this, but you do. I mean, you see lots of you see lots of lads that I think the PFA even say the average. You know, that, I know a, a while ago they were saying the average career was seven or eight years, mm. um, but I know you'll get lads that will come out of academies and they'll get a pro contract. You know, a couple of years. Then at the end of that, they out the game. You know, they don't realise that 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 first contract's only the start. You've got to get the yeah. second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Yeah. And, you know, it is, it is difficult being a footballer. You know, it's brilliant, don't get me wrong. It's the best job in the world. But, you know, it's very, very cutthroat. There's only 92 clubs. There's how many, so many contracts to go around. So, you, you know, you, you, you've you got to work at it and you've got to dedicate your whole life to it. Yeah, absolutely. I think footballers get a lot of, a lot of stick, don't they, for sort of earning a lot of money and things like that. But it, it's an easy stick to be in with. Like you say, it's such a small elite group that actually make it and it's such a short career really in terms of anyone else's career you can go and get a job somewhere in an office at 18 and you can be there till you're 65 footballers have got like you say 15 years is a is a long career so that that's why the money's high isn't it they've dedicated their life yeah but i mean the, the money i don't get wrong like the top level and even probably the top yeah. two levels now the money's fantastic you know it wasn't like that when i was playing obviously yeah. the premier league money you know was astronomical but i think not 90 you know probably 90 percent 95 percent of the lads that have good careers you know they have to come out the game and work yeah you know they, they haven't got enough money to sit back and say right that's it i'm never doing a mm. tap again in my life you know i've, I've worked harder since i came out the game than yeah. i have done in it or, or before it but the, the way I always looked at it and the way I always tried to play was, listen, I'd be getting up on a Sunday morning, probably half pissed from the Saturday night to do this for free anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm playing for some great clubs and getting paid for it. That was the way I, I always looked at it. It was like, if you like, it was like a 15-year holiday from work for me. <laughs> so, 
the crack it, it, it was brilliant. But I, I think you, you come across a lot of the lads, and you know, I've met loads of footballers that you think, "What well, did you actually enjoy football?" And they're very bitter about the careers. But yeah. listen, I'd have loved to apply for Man U and earn fifty grand a week, but it didn't happen. But you know, I've done something for fifteen years that. 99% of blokes would give the right arm to do so, you know, I, I, I can't moan about any of it. Amazing. So, in the 1994-95 season, you won the Anglo-Italian Cup. Yeah, yeah. Winning that from uh, Paul Devlin Cross, what was sort of that like playing in that type of cup competition? Well, we'd, we'd actually come runners-up the year before and all I remember about it, you, you'd play in Italy with an English ref and you'd play in England with an Italian ref. And it was just sendings off left, right and centre in every game because they didn't like the tackling. and It was just absolutely murder. But it was great because it, I got two Wembley appearances. Out of it. You know, I played at Wembley the first year and we lost to Brescia, who had probably to this day one of the best players I ever played against playing, George Hadley, the Romo uh, Ro Romania captain. He, he was captain of Brescia that day. was absolutely unbelievable. And then obviously we got to the final again the next year against Ascoli. They had Oliver Bierhoff playing up front for the men. You know, when I had a great career with Germany. Yeah, yeah, ended up winning, being involved in the goal. Big, big Devon. Big Devon won't score in the goal. So that was great. Yeah. You know, people used to deride that competition, but I turned around and said, well, hang on, it got me two Wembley appearances and a, and a winner's medal. You know, yeah. so uh, it, was, it was brilliant, but it was a strange one because there was that many sendings off in it. You know, <laughs> it, it, it was a joke. You'd get away with tackling in Italy because you'd have an English ref. Then they'd be going off their head. So then you'd come back home and you'd do a tackle and you'd give a foul and you'd be going off your head because it was an Italian ref. So but I, I loved it. I loved it. Obviously, I'm going to say that because I had two, two cup finals out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that as well, it reminded me of the Cup Winners Cup, which is another great cup competition. I just think they need to bring stuff like that back. If, you got sort of monopolised it with Champions League and Europa League. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not a great watcher of football now. I think it's... Mm a bit soulless, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I always remember my hometown club, Birmingham City, where everyone in the Anglo-Italian, they were only getting very, very small crowds. That's yeah. County was getting six or 7,000, but we was, only, we was only probably getting that most weeks anyway. But Karen Brady did kids for a quid. So, yeah. Birmingham, and they were getting crowds of 20, 20 plus thousand, mm. and you were hooking your kids. Oh, I like this, Dad, can I come back on a Saturday yeah. and all that? Yeah. So I, I don't think I don't think clubs really utilise that competition very you know well enough really, and it wasn't taken probably seriously enough by a lot of clubs. But you know I, I, I look at the way the league and the, the Champions League and all that's formatted today. I mean, finish fourth in the league and you can get in the Champions League. Nobody gives a toss about cup competitions. Why don't they have top two Champions League, league and FA Cup winners Champions League? Yeah. You'd have everybody trying to win the cups then, and yeah. it'd get back to how it was when we you know when we was kids. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's all sort of it's all sort of geared to Champions League and Premier League, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just You're absolutely right, right with that, aren't you? As well, because I think we spoke with Tom Lee about it, didn't we? In the uh, Johnson's Paint Trophy, which is now whatever it is, and yeah. sort of the way that's changed over the recent years. Like it used to be such a good competition for League One, League Two teams to try and get to Wembley, and now they've got like under twenty threes at Liverpool. Yeah. And it's just a bit sort of degrading for the footballers who've been working so hard for so many years to go and play. But, but you, you look at a lot of them under-23 teams from the big clubs, they're getting turned over by first and second division teams. Yeah. There's just another bugbear of mine. When I was 18, you know, set from sort of 17, 18 to 19, playing non-league against men, blokes yeah. that had been pro, 35-year-old, good non-league pros, you've you, you got to grow up. Then I'm playing on a Wednesday in the reserve league for Notts County against people like Noel Blake. Mm. Now, from 19 to 23 now, the, the, the kids are playing against kids their own age. And yeah. mm. let me tell you, I, I could have been the best. You give you, you give me, when I was playing in my day, the best 21-year-old left back in the under-21s. It's going to be a different story when he comes up against a bloke who's been mm. around the block, who's played a couple of hundred games, who's going to leave a bit on him, who's going to, you know, going to take him places he don't want to be. So I think, you know, I mean, under-23s as well, to me, if you're not in the first team, boy, 21, 22, 23, you've got to go somewhere else and play. And I think, yeah. especially at the big clubs now, a lot of these players are that comfortable playing from 18 to 23 in these, you know, under 23 leagues. They, they, they don't actually want to drop down a level and go and play. And, you yeah, know, yeah. to me, it was all about playing. You almost can't blame them. And that's the sad thing as well, when 
Yeah. Yeah, the average salary in like Chelsea's under 23 teams, £35,000 yeah. a week. Yeah. Well, so well I remember happy. speaking to Tommy Mooney. Tommy Mooney was at Villa um, doing a few years ago, I think it was under Paul Lambert. Obviously, played with Moons at Blues and uh, talking to him because he, his, lad, his lad's a pro. And uh, I says, How are you getting on, Tom? He's going, Debbie says, We've got lads in here that we're getting teams like Stockport, Cheltenham, want to take them and go on loan. But like you just said, they're on, I think at Villa, they were on three, four, five, six, seven grand a week, comfortable sitting there. They don't want to go out and play. But at the end of that year's two contract, whatever them kids have got, they're going to be on the scrap heap then, you know, yeah. looking around for a club. Now, to me, you've got to get out and play against men. Go and play against men. Even if you drop down the levels, go and learn what it's like to play against a big bruising 35-year-old who's going to elbow you, who's going to kick you. You know, not yeah. bossing or see kids football, pass it there, or let you have it, you pass it to me and I have it. And, you know, I, I, I did it fully enough. Neil Warnock on about, you know, he, he wants the, the reserve league to come back and, and mm. scrap these. Um, there was a couple of couple of managers around about that last week, I believe. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of that. Get, get playing against men. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think you said that, didn't you, Josh, the other day, actually, about bringing the Reserve League back. Yeah, I can't remember who we were speaking to, but it were, it were a similar thing when, when a player's been playing that, they get chucked in and, and they're just so far away from being ready. And they might even be, like you say, they might be 22, 23 by the time they're getting chucked in and then they're not ready. So that's it. You do yeah. Whereas chuck them in at 19 against... against uh, some blokes in reserve games who knows what they're going to be doing at well, Kurt, Curtis Woodhouse was on about it was Curtis as well Curtis was on about it the other day saying at 17, 18 he's, he's playing in Chef United Reserves with mm. Uncle Vonk and, and people like that against other you know experienced pros and then it didn't do him too bad did he went on to be the youngest ever captain at Chef U and you know multi-million pound transfer to Blues and, mm. uh, so yeah you know I, I, I'm all for that yeah definitely so we've touched on it. So from Notts County, you moved to your home city of Birmingham. Yeah. Scoring seven out of 16 in your opening half a season and mm. then two coming against big rivals, Wolves. What was that moment like and what did that mean to you? Yeah, it was brilliant because it, it, another character saw me, Barry Fry. So mm. uh, it, myself and Andy Legg, who we went on to play for Cardiff and Wales, had mad long throwing leg. We both signed in a joint deal because myself, Andy Legg and Michael Johnson who was already at Blues. We used to live together in Nottingham, you see, so we was all at Nuts Council and we were all real, real close pals. So it was great to get the chance to link up again. But obviously, I used to go down and watch the Blues. My uncle used to take me down and um, I knew how big the club was. Re really similar club to Sheffield, in, in my opinion. Um, so I went, obviously, uh, first game, Sunderland. Now, I'd played against Sunderland two weeks before, beat them 3-2 for Nuts Council, scored two screamers, Andy Melville was the centre half, absolutely murdered him. So <laughs> debut Sunderland at home. Barry Floors and the team. I mean, it's oh, brilliant. I said it'd be easy to die, Gaffer. I murdered him last last couple of weeks ago. Uh, three two. So I'm I'm giving it loads, and I we end up <laughs> losing the game one 0 Andy Melville scores from a header. <laughs> I think he only scored about three goals ever. So I get it. Baz absolutely kills me. Then he like hammers me. But then on the Monday night. I think it was a Monday or a Tuesday night, I can't remember. We had Wolves, and obviously at the time, that was the big game, Wolves and Albion, because they'd been out, Villa had been in the top league for that long, Blues hadn't played them for ages. So it was like 28,000, full house on a on a Tuesday at St Andrews, and the pitch, if ever you see the pitch, it was just a mud bath. And I managed to get, get the two goals. Mm -hmm. So I got off to a fly there, and obviously, like you say, I scored about seven in however many in that sort of last few games. Unfortunately, Baz, Baz got the sack then, Mm -hmm. uh, and Trevor come in and, you know, I think in Trevor's first season, I was, I was top goal scorer and player of the year, but didn't ne never really saw eye to eye with Trevor and, you know, obviously ended up uh, at, the, at the end of that little spell coming up to Sheffield. Yeah. I feel like there's some stories around Barry. You've said that is uh, is a good character. What what was the sort of the best moment that you've had? Oh, listen, most of them I, I couldn't tell you on, you know, on air, but <laughs> it, it was just brilliant. I mean, I remember one time with, Paul Titan, Baz thought he bottled a tackle. He's actually running up and down the touchline doing wah, 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 to his own player. And Titan's doing, yes, yes, yes. So I'm not arguing. And, and I remember one time we stopped away at Grimsby. And uh, at that time, it wasn't like five-star hotels. It was like cheap and cheerful. So I room with Michael Johnson. So I'm in, I'm in bed, like, obviously get to bed early on the floor. And you can hear like, someone coming down the corridor. 
banging all the way. But there was a wedding on. So we just assumed it was a wedding, you know. No sleep, nothing. So I've gone downstairs in the morning and sitting around the table with Jono and one or two other lads. So Baz comes down and he's getting his cooked breakfast, sit, sits down and then, how, how are you, lads? You want to sleep? I'm like, no, I guess I'm a nightmare, actually. So it's lying in bed. One of the, I won't tell you what language I use. I said, but some so and so's come down banging all the doors, waking up. I mean, yeah, that was me. I was pissed. So, so look, he's woken, waking all the lags up, banging all. I was at the wedding. He'd gone into the wedding reception to have a, to have a drink, got lagging, and thought it'd be fun to knock everyone up at three or four in the morning. But, yeah, but what, what I liked about Baz, I mean, you could have a stand up round with Baz, and he, you'd be in each other's face, shouting. And as soon as the final whistle went, it was forgot. Uh, and he, he was a brilliant, great character. I mean, he, he brought Blues out the doldrums. Blues had been in the doldrums for a long time. And then, and to be fair, Karen Brady, Sullivan and the Golds, they come in, they got Baz in and sort of ignited that flame again. But, but Baz was brilliant. I loved him. It was just unfortunate that I only, I only had sort of 17, 18 games under him, I think. Yeah. So I know, I don't know if it was when he went, but you, you're ending at Birmingham. What wasn't? Really, a pretty one. I think. No, no, it was um, it was a shame, really, because obviously Trevor is he's got you know he's he's got at Birmingham. He's yeah, you know, the boy wonder, best ever player, uh, and he came in and and like I said, won one nil on his debut. Ross scored the goal. Palace. I always remember it was about 104 degrees that day, <laughs> and that season went on to to be top goal scorer from sort of right midfield. 19 yeah. goals, which was my best ever return. Player of the year. But he brought in uh, he brought in Steve Bruce, Gary Ablett, Barry Horn, Mike Mule, Paul Furlong, you know, big hitters that had all had really good careers. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of that following season, I was out of contract. And um, obviously they, they were offering me contracts. And all, all I remember saying to myself, I want the same as Paul Furlong. Uh, and that was it. And it, I was, I'll tell you what I was on. I was on a grand a week then at the worst. I was on a grand a week, and I think Furs was on. I might get it wrong, but this is what this is what I was told was on five grand a week. Right. I said, exactly. just give me the same, give me a three-year contract, the same as Paul Furlong. I don't want any more. He, well, he was our record. So they paid two and a half million for him then, and he was the right. record signing. I went, yeah, but he's here now. He's not at Chelsea. He's here now, and he isn't scoring as many goals as me, and he's not playing as well as me. For a great lad, I'm not knocking first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First is a top top lad. I said, I just want parity, uh, and he just. He just didn't see me as worth it. And then, you know, he'd he tell me in one breath that he rated me at two or three million. You know, back then, that was quite a lot of money back then. Yeah. Uh, and then so, well, if you rate me that highly, why won't you give me a, a contract to, yeah. you know, sort of match that? Yeah. And then it sort of got, we had the fallouts. He bought me on the sub one day and bought me off. In, in that second season under Trevor, I think I'd scored eight in about the first 13 games. Mm. And he left me out and he, he bit part player me and bought me on a sub, took me off at Port Vale, played me one minute in an FA Cup competition. That's why I couldn't couldn't play in the semi-final for yeah, Sheffield right. at, yeah. at Old Trafford. Yeah. Uh, always remember as well, I'd equaled his record of scoring in consecutive league games. I think it was five or six. And we were playing away at Tranmere. Yeah. Um, so I, I, would have, I don't know whether I equaled it or I, I would have beat it. I can't remember anyway. And yeah. he brought me off after like 50 minutes and we won 3 0. So just little things like that. And, and we didn't we didn't see all to. I'm very much uh, say say what I'd rather have a manager in my face giving me a right roasting, telling me how shit I've been. Yeah. yeah. Than someone who doesn't and you know will leave you out and does you know, I am that I'm a I'm a face to face person. And I, I just never never got that vibe from Trevor that he really ever truly believed in me as a player. Yeah. Or really, really wanted me then. And, and you get a lot of that with managers. He was a new manager. I wasn't a Trevor signing, you know, so I understand that you want your own team to come in. But, you know, I was a Birmingham lad. I'd done excellent in the first, you know, year or two at the club. And I just felt that he didn't, you know, he didn't really have any faith in me. And then obviously, the, the, it was in the pro, Paul Devlin's being greedy. He's asking for this, he's asking for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at it now, the figures that we're talking in the scheme of things, you know, it's, it's pennies, isn't it, for that yeah, level yeah. now? Yeah. Um, but you know, I was I was mid twenties then, so it was going to be it was going to be a really important. It was going to be one of my my better contracts. Yeah. So yeah. we just that we had the fallouts and arguments, and like I say, he'd, he'd leave me out and stuff like that, and it, it ended very sourly. And, and I, I was always painting the villain of the piece because I, the press, never knew what was actually being said. I could never say figures or anything like that. Uh, and B, Trevor is God. So, 
you know, at Birmingham City, you could never win an argument with Trevor. So it, it was, you know, it was really, it was, it was quite a bad time, really, because I was getting a bit of stick off the crowd and that as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, on the flip side of that, to get the chance, you know, to go back years down the line was nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting because it, it comes up a few times, doesn't it, when a club signs a player or they're considering signing a player that maybe breaks the wage structure that they've got, or mm. you always hear, Oh, it might, it, it's great for the club that they're signing this player. But I always do wonder how's that going to affect the dressing room that's already there, the top players that are already there. Yeah. Having someone like you've just been saying, Paul Furlong, obviously, on five times your salary when you yeah. were and still were the best player at the club at that yeah. time. It, it, does that piss off? The whole dressing room at that point. Not nothing against Paul in that case. No, no, no right. yeah, I, th- I think so. I think if it's, um, I mean, I had this, I had this time at Sheffield, to be honest with you. But I think, I mean, David Kelly is a great friend of mine. We, we sort of differ on this because Ned always says to me, "You sign that contract, you're happy to sign it. Don't worry what anyone else is on." Which is fair enough, and you know, I do agree with that. But I was coming to the end of my contract. Uh, I was out of contract. I've done my three year. I think I was on a grand the first year. 11 and 12. I think mm. that was my first, that was my first three year contract. So obviously I was in the final year of that. So I'm thinking, well, okay, I've, I've, I've proved that I can do it at this club, at, uh, excuse me, at this level. I want, and we, we knew obviously Brucey and people yeah. like that and Gary Ablett, and, but you know, they'd come from Everton, Liverpool, yeah, Man yeah. U. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we knew they were going to be on, on big money. I said, you know, I, I don't know in comparison to Furs what they were on, but I believe obviously Bruce was on Mega though there. But I just thought, you know, I'm doing a better job than what you've brought in first to do at that moment in time. Yeah. And I just want, you know, but the, the, the annoying thing was he never even got me anywhere near that. It wasn't like yeah. he got to three and a yeah. half, what about three and a half, and we could have met in the middle. Yeah. It yeah. was like, no, there's whatever. It was like yeah. pennies more than what I was on. So it wasn't even a case of let's meet halfway. He's offering me two, well, I want five, we'll have three and a half. It, it, yeah. it wasn't even a... It wasn't even the case of that, which was annoying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was, it was a, a bad period really for me personally. Anyway, yeah, it's the same in like I, I, you know us three all work together and we all know what each other's on roughly, and mm. it's the same kind of thing. You know, mm. I'm sure uh, you and Nick would be pissed off, Josh, if I came in tomorrow and I got three <laughs> grand pay rise for no reason. So <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing in any yeah. occupation, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I think, I think if, if you're getting, your if, you know, if you're getting players like obviously Furs have come from Chelsea, they paid. You're expecting them to be on more than the lads that had been there under Baz. You know, yeah. that's, you know, that I would never address, if I was only a year into a three or four year contract, you know, it more and more would have been a different story. But I was coming to the end of it. The, yeah. There was a lot of interest in me. I remember giving Steve Bruce a lift back to the uh, train station one day, where, you know, we're playing. <laughs> and Brian Robson's on the phone saying Middlesbrough wanted to sign me. There was a few clubs interested in signing me. Yeah. And it would have been, it was just at the start of when the money was getting big. Yeah. And, you know, Ipswich, Middlesbrough. There, there were teams at the top level then, so there was a there was a lot of lot of interest. But obviously, the way it all sort of fizzled out with me, Trevor kicking me out the team, my value went from there to there. Yeah, yeah. And I think in the end, that just it was like let's get something for him before he actually walks away on a free. So yeah. I think I think Trevor handled it poorly. If I'm being really honest with you, yeah, yeah. seems like it was poor all around. Like you say, poor for, for club to get no return and. Yeah, and, and, I, and you know, to be honest, I'm not the most tactful, so I probably could have handled it better myself. And yeah. certain ways I reacted. So you know, I, I take some of the blame, but it was, um, yeah, it was just a strange one because to me, if I was a manager, I mean, obviously you want you want your own signings to come in and hit the ground and do great. But if you go in there and you got a kid that's doing really well and it's cost you nothing, you know, it's, it's a bonus to me. But yeah. it seemed to be the opposite at that period. But uh, yeah, that's the way the cookie crumbles with that, lads. Yeah. So you're re- uh, reunited with previous manager Steve Thompson at the division yeah. rival Sheffield United. I think in that season you was awarded the Player of the Season in ninety nine two thousand. Yeah, yeah. But then obviously you was loaned back to Notts County. How did that come about after signing for sort of United? Yeah, well, no, I, I love Tom. I've got on great with Tom. Tom actually sold me him and Colin Murphy from Notts County to Blues. So I played for Tom before. knew what he was knew what he was about. Really liked Tom. I look. Straight as a door, straight as a come, big football man, big blade as well. So as soon as I got the chance, you know, they'd, they'd let me go and there was, um, uh, they were willing to sign. I knew the club, obviously, from playing there. Like I say, really similar sort of club in fan base, stature, everything to Birmingham. Uh, and, and I jumped at the chance. Obviously, the first year I went there, 
I couldn't play in the, the, the semi-final because I'd, I'd been cut tied. But we got to the we got to the playoffs and lost to Sunderland in the semis of the playoffs. Um, they had a lot of big hitters there at the time because it was it was on the back of the Kendall era where Sheffield would throw a lot of money at it. Dean Saunders, Graham Stewart, people like that. I mean, Ian Rush, Paul McGrath, they were all at the club when I first signed there. So the wage bill was absolutely astronomical. And obviously missing out that year on the playoffs, Tom always got the job and he's been told, right, he's got to go. So he's had to look probably slash the wage bill, you know, probably more than half. So uh, obviously Tom, I got the bullet. Bruce had come in. And obviously, I'd played for 18 months with Bruce. So, he loved, you know, I love Bruce. He's coming as player manager. But we had that many players there. Uh, and he just says to me, Big Sam was at Nuts County. He went, Debbie said, I can't play. So, I've got Dean Saunders. He said, I've got to play him. Um, obviously, because we've got to try and offload him sort of thing. You're, you're not going to get a game. So, that was fair enough. You know, as soon as anyone tells me that, I'm like, okay. I'll, I'll, I was never one. To, I'll sit on the bench and wait. Yeah, I'll go somewhere else and play. Yeah. So, I went and had a month with Big Sam. And, you know, true to his word, I think Dino ended up going to Ben Fleeker or somewhere and Graham Stewart to Charlton. <laughs> Bruce, he brought me back. And then that was really the start of me, you know, getting in every week for Sheffield. Obviously, Bruce, he didn't last too long. And then we had, obviously, Slade, yeah. Adrian Heath, people like that. And then and then Warnock come in. And then and then I think you, you're right, it was 99, 2000. That, that was the Warnock season, I think. And I, I got, got player of the year, but... You know, people, especially down here, people always associate me with Birmingham. Some of Bromley lad and play for them. But I played more games for Sheffield than any other club that I played for. Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, I had four, I've got to say, 90, 99% of it, brilliant years there. Made some great friends, still keep in touch with my big mate Paddy, who lives in uh, lives in Gleadless, his godfather to one of my kids, and still speak to Tom O'Curtis Curtis Woodhouse. I was down in Cornwall before the lockdown, having a beer with Wayne Quinn. Lee Sandsworth, yeah, so Pesh. So I had, had a brilliant four years up there, but it was just a shame I came. I came on, you know, the challenge for that that much, for not, never quite got there. Mm-hmm. And when I come in, it was a case of managers changing, wage bill slash. Uh, and then obviously when I left, eventually Warnock, Warnock got them back up. So brilliant club and I, I love my time there. Again, didn't didn't end for me well there, but I, I've got to say that that was entirely my fault. That was no one else's fault. That was that that was down to me. Yeah. What was that then, Paul? If you can. Well, I signed again. It's, I signed a contract. Warnock uh, had told me there was a wage structure and there was a wage ceiling. Um, oh, I think I was I was coming up to thirty then. Mm. So I've, I've gone. Yeah, okay. And I've, I've won Player of the Year, and I'm, oh, you know, I was getting 10, 11 goals from right wing. I was, I was playing playing well. Um, so I agreed with Derek Dooley. God rest him, who was a top man. So he said, right, I'll tell you what I'll do. You know, we've got this wage structure now. No one's coming in above that, but I'll give you an extra year. So it was a four-year contract. Brilliant, yeah. happy day. So I signed it. And then, about, and then about, I don't know, about two weeks later, we signed Kyla Saba, who was on double. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, I don't know the figures, what, what Saab's on. But Saab's, again, was a great lad. So I, I, I had a little moan up about that. But that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the issue, really. I got, I got tapped up, if I'm being honest. I had the phone call to go uh, for Palace, the Crystal mm-hmm. Palace, and it was, you know, down south. It was, it was, it was big dog, mega dog. So I went, Gaffer, listen, you know, this is the chance. I'm, I'm approaching third, so, and it all sort of snowballed from there, really. And then obviously Brucey left Palace, uh, and it all sort of got. Man. But what, what I will say, Warnock handled it brilliantly. He didn't. He went, Dev, okay, not in the team, blah blah blah. And then obviously Birmingham were going to sign me, mm. and it all fell through. And I never forget it. It all, it all fell through, uh, and he put me straight back in the team. Or not? Never forget it. Norwich away, so we, we played. Not it was a telly guy. So Norwich away, played well, scored the goal. I'm thinking, right, that's it. It's all behind me now. Yeah. Back, back on. I've still got three years here. Brilliant. So in the on the bus on the way back, he went to get yourself down to Birmingham tomorrow. You, you're signing for Birmingham, you know. Well, well, I didn't know whether I was coming or going, but yeah, I went down there initially on on loan, uh, and then obviously obviously signed when we got promoted, but. Warnock was brilliant. He didn't sort of cast me out or anything. He, yeah. You know, he'd give me plenty of days off because I don't think he wanted me around the training ground kicking people because I was a, a bit grumpy. <laughs> but it, it was brilliant, you know. But I did, you know, looking back now, I, I definitely could have handled that. I started to get a little bit of stick off the fans as well, which is yeah. which is never nice. So looking back now, I'd have definitely, definitely handled it, it differently. But it's just, just one of those things. You know, I was there four years and for three years and... 
three years and 11 months, it was absolutely brilliant. You know, and the, the, you know, I let myself down really the way, I, the way I left the club. Yeah, yeah. So the last thing before we go on to a little five-question quiz about your career, if that's all right. <laughs> yeah. So you signed for Watford, I uh, believe that Elton, well, Sir Elton John had actually sort of paid the fee and the wages for you. What was that like? Did you meet him beforehand or is it just a load of BS, really? Well, let, let me tell you, you can imagine the stick from lads down the years I've had about this guy. <laughs> no, it's, it's 100% true. Um, Ray Lewington, who's, uh, you know, uh, Roy Hudson's number two now, yeah. um, he said to Ray, I'll, I'll fund one player, the transfer fee and uh, a three-year contract. And Ray picked me, so, oh. yeah, and, and he paid for everything. I never met him. Never met him before he asked, but what I, what we did go to a concert that he did at, at, at Vicarage Road, and he was on stage talking about the club and that, and he gave me a big shout out on stage. So Paul Devlin, <laughs> I was in I was in the stand, so That's you can awesome. imagine all the lads are all turning around, and you can imagine the great thing. Elton John's on stage giving me a shout out, saying how how much he loved Watford. But what I will say, I mean, he's not just one of these, you know, cardboard fans. He's a mad, yeah. mad Watford fan. He used to find Ray Lou uh, on the way back from away games. Every, how did so and so play? And, you know, he knew all the players, knew where they all played. Very, very knowledgeable about the game. And you know, I think if you look down the years, the amount of times that he's actually stepped into the breach at Watford, out and out with a few quid. He's been chairman there at once. At, you know, at one spell. He does. He does love the club. So yeah, it is true. I mean, uh, it's a nice one to tell the grandkids in years to come. Isn't it? That <laughs> probably it, one of the most famous men on the planet played for me to yeah, play. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can't argue that. <laughs> right, Josh, I'll let you go through it. Yeah, okay. So we do this with all our guests. It's called the, the Tommy Lee Pro 5 Quiz. Tommy earned the naming rights because he, he was the first to get five out of five. So um but no pressure, just just about your career, just a few. Oh, I should know the answers. I've got to know the oh, right, okay. It's about your career though. <laughs> I've got the worst memory in the world, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so number one, uh, you made over 500 football league or Premier League appearances. How many goals did you score? And this is multiple choices: 84, 86, or 88 across Premier League and football league. So there's no there's no cup goals in that. No cup goals, just league. 84, 88. <laughs> yeah, undersold yourself by four. Yeah, yeah, 88. Um, number two, you received four red cards in your career. Yeah. <laughs> A bit fiery, as you've said. Are you yeah. sure that's right? I thought it was more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got four, and I'm, there were definitely at least four. Yeah, at least, that's right. <laughs> Might have had another 15 um, in the Cups. Yeah. <laughs> again, I think this is just league. But yeah, I've got, I've got against who? Can you remember who they're against? <laughs> um, Bolton. I've not got Bolton down, but we'll... Well, I definitely got sent off against Bolton. Definitely for Blues. I tried on uh, Jimmy Phillips. I tried on him. <laughs> uh, Bolton. Okay, you had five red cards in your career. <laughs> Bolton, Bournemouth, Wolves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Derby. Uh, yeah. Derby. Who else? Who else? Uh, I've, got, I've, got, I've got quite a wide choice here. <laughs> so, how many have I? I've got four, and I've got to get one more. You've listed four. But yeah, I only had four down. And you got oh, right, okay. What was the one you had then that I never got? So I've got that one, haven't I? I've got the four. Yeah, you've got four. I had Preston. Preston? I said yeah. Preston, did not. No. Yeah, well, Pre Preston. I remember it, yeah. Kick mark yeah. ranking. So that, yeah. that'll be the, the one, and then Wolves, Derby. So I've got, you've got to give me that one. I got four. Yeah, yeah, you can have that, yeah. What did you uh, do at Derby then? Because I'm a Derby County fan. Who, who did you beat up there? I can't remember now. I, ju I just remember Ashley Young got me out of shit because. We was doing all right, and I got sent off. We went one nil down. It was only the second game for Watford. Oh, I thought, it? oh god, here we go. Youngies managed to nick one. We drew one one. I can't remember to be honest, but I would have thought there was more sending. I would have said about eight, eight to nine if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, it's it, it, we're doing your favourites. Why to feel yeah. out for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, number three, uh, thirty-four of your league appearances were in the Premier League with Birmingham. How many Premier League goals did you score? Not many. I'd say three. Three, correct. Spot on. Yeah. Did you notice a big difference playing in the Premier League? I think physically, I found it easier. You know, I put so about the pace of the Premier League. I think the lower down you go, the more frenetic, the more the people rely on the obviously pace and strength and that. What I found in the Premier League was that at either end, the more clinical. Yeah. So 
you might only get one chance in a game in the Premier League, but you might get three or four in the Championship. And in the Championship, you could give a forward in the Championship a couple of chances and he might not take it. You give a forward in the Premier League, on Shearer, or people like that a chance, and invariably they're going to take it. So I just think the quality at either end is a lot higher. And then obviously international football again. That's a bit, from a physical point of view, I found it easy. Yeah, but just yeah, we've had a few on that have, that have said that sort of the the higher you go, you get more space and things like that. Yeah, because because people, I think further down, because obviously the further down you go, no disrespect to players at that level, they lack the ability of the top top players, so they have to make up for it in bustle and bustle and getting stuck in and running around. So I always found that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Question four. You spent two and a half years at Watford. Uh, while there. Which teammate did you make the most appearances alongside? Uh, as choice of three again, it's Gavin, Gavin Marne, Neil Ardley, or Neil Cox. Gavin Marne. Yeah, seventy. Gavin Marne. He's yeah. another Brummie as well. Is he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, forty-nine. Neil Ardley, fifty-one. Gavin uh, Neil Cox. Yeah, seventy. Gavin Marne. Uh, and last one. So I want to touch on your, uh, your Scotland career as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so anyone who knows who who listen to this podcast will know a bit of a geek with, with squad numbers. I like, I like me, right wingers to be number seven, yeah, right yeah, yeah. wingers to be number 11. Um, so, question five is, which two squad numbers did you wear for Scotland for the senior team? I actually had three. You're absolutely doing me out here, Paul. <laughs> 14, 11 and seven. See, I've got, oh, see, I've got pictures. So I've got two answers. I'd say 14, 11 and 7. So I, I saw pictures of you in 11 and in 14, but I assume that were under 21s. No, Seven no. I've got, and there is another one. I saw, I saw a picture in this one as well. So we'll say No, I, had, I didn't play under 21s. I had, I had 10 full caps and one, one B cap. Oh. But it's uh, funny enough because all my shirts are up in the last and I'm definitely 7, 11 and 14 up there. And do you not want to get them framed up then, Paul? <laughs> to be honest, I've got a few of them framed, and, but I was never really one for swapping shirts and that with mm. players and doing that. You know, that day with the enemy when I was lashing the one to do was <laughs> shirt off. I wanted to kick it off the back when I was playing against them, so I don't want to wear it. So I, I didn't get many, many shirts and that from down the years, to be honest. Yeah, it said um, 17 as well. The, the two I had were 7 and 17. Oh, did you not know 17? <laughs> so, yeah, I probably did. You know, it's. I mean, I was, I was sub a few times, so I would have been in the you know 13 to 17 category. Yeah. Obviously, the starting ones would have been 11, 11 and 7. So yeah, I, did, yeah, I, I definitely will give you that. I asked for two, and, and you've given three. And I, I have seen the proof. As I say, I assumed they were yeah, they were sort of younger age groups. But playing for Scotland, then what what what's that like? Ten caps? Yeah, Not that was brilliant caps. because again, it was like it was like everything else in my career. It, you know, making making it as a pro came late. I was 19. I was 30 odd by the time I got to the Premier League, uh, Premier League and yeah. 30 when I got my first cap. So I thought it had passed me by. And to yeah. be honest, there'd been talk down the years when I was at Sheffield and obviously Birmingham before that, that I was going to get a cap uh, when Craig Brown was manager. And I wasn't playing any better then than I had done for the previous 10 years. The big thing was I was playing in the Premier League. Yeah. And, and as you know, with a lot of people, there's nothing outside the Premier League. They're that focused on that day. You know, so I think that was the catalyst because people were, hang on a minute, he's actually playing OK against Premier League opposition. We'll yeah. give him a chance. Obviously, Bertie Volks, who's a, you know, a legend of the game as a, as, as a player, didn't, didn't do the greatest job for Scotland, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Just rang me one day, you know, do you fancy it? Obviously, at 30, I'd to get the chance to, to get a cap was, was unbelievable because it isn't, it, it isn't just like a distance granddad with me. My dad's from a place called Coatbridge, just outside Glasgow, and all that side of the family uh, are up there. And then, you know, every school holiday, you know, I was always up there. You know, I spent a lot of time in Scotland as a kid. So it was great. The only thing is I struggled to get enough tickets for that first game. I made my debut against Canada in a friendly at Easter Road, and I think I needed about 24 tickets. But it, it was brilliant. It was just unfortunate, obviously. At that time, it was a real, real poor period for Scotland in Alberta. Bertie didn't do that well there. I think you know he was used to he was used to working with German players and world class players that he could slot in anywhere. You play there, I'll play there. And obviously, he's come he's come along and he's he's got us. And I, I think he found it difficult to adapt to. But brilliant, you know, 
I always remember probably my, my highlight was playing in the Euros. Uh, we played in the European campaign to get to Portugal. Yeah. I'm playing against Germany at Hamden. So mm. now you're standing there with the national anthem going, 55,000 mad jocks at Hamden, yeah. you know, and the telly there, the unbelievable atmosphere in what, you know, probably the top three games ever played in. And, and we went 1-0 up, actually, and we ended up mm. drawing the game 1-1. Um, so, you know, that gave me some great memories. Lovely for the all my family in Scotland and my dad to see me there wearing, yeah. you know, wearing that, that blue kit. So it, it was brilliant. Just probably kind to relate, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Brilliant. So that's it, Paul. Thank you very much yeah. for coming on to the podcast. We massively appreciate it. Oh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. No worries, lads. Thank you, mate. Cheers for your You're time. Right. No worries. All the best, lads. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Paul. Thank you, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. Thank you so much. Bye bye. 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 Wasn't Paul a brilliant guest? And now let's get on with our weekend's fixtures. And looking back at last week's, Derby Barnsley was. Abandoned as we as it happens every time we go to South Yorkshire, <laughs> but Burnley Brighton Luke took us through it. Do you know second half of that game is the best Burnley have played in terms of actual entertaining attacking football for for years? Outstanding. Matt Loughton was like reincarnation of Cafu, which is unbelievable for me to say. He's never been an attacking player, but it was just it, it was ridiculous. Vidra played like a cross between. Sort of Ariel Ortega and some other kind of nimble number ten type player from David the late nineties. No. Unbelievable uh, performance! Cannot believe we only drew, but it was really good, making Brighton look like a League One outfit. Really, something we struggled with against Bournemouth. But... <laughs> so yeah, annoying result. Josh, man, you Everton. Uh, quite similar, but but the other way. United's first half performance was one of the the best that we've put in um, this season, and we weren't bad in the whole game. A shocking first five minutes to the second half, which completely let them back in when we should have just killed the game off. Um, but then we gained control again, um, got back into the lead. We were seeing it out comfortably, gave away a silly foul, and then really really poor defending. Week from De Gea should have come out and, and just took everything, but it is what it is. Point's not a terrible result. We're not going to win the league, but we should Improving. finish in top four, which, which we'd have took before start of the season. So, yeah. Cool. Right, well, there's only two points that week, and that was Luke getting two points from my new Everton draw. So... Current scores on the doors has me still at 64, Luke at 52, and Josh at 30. Not bad. Uh, Luke's getting closer. He, he puts more bets than the than, than rest of us and all, doesn't he? <laughs> Should probably not. Well, that's just our score prediction. I'll, I'll lose them as well. <laughs> right. Now, this weekend's fixtures then Derby versus Borough. I'll start and I'll say it every week until we score more than one. 1 0 Derby. <laughs> <laughs> right, what do you think, Josh? Um, I, I've got no idea how good Middlesbrough are, um, and I'm not even going to want to know. I'm going to go one-one. One-one. Luke. Yeah, that's what one, I was one. thinking when you set the game. Yeah, one-all. Big one then for Burnley away at Palace. What do you think? Um, Zaha being injured is a massive, massive thing for them. Really, a bit like Newcastle without Wilson. I don't, I don't rate anything else they've got up front. Particularly, I know people. Oh, as a he'll tear us to bits now. I'll say this, but I saw him score one goal that was decent against someone turgid like Fulham. But apart from that, he just gets lumped off the park. He's too weak. It's probably coming time. You know, just saying. I'm, I am going to stick my neck out and say after the disgusting performance in the FA Cup when he rested pretty much everyone, 1-0 Burnley. Because Daesh always gets absolute <laughs> criticism, <laughs> criticism for days when we go out at Cups, and rightly so. But he tends to then follow it up with a league win. 
Um, so I'm going to say 1-0 Burnley. Burnley. Sorry if you could hear me uh, roaring dog. <laughs> what, you just want more? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what do you think, Josh, then, to that game? Um, did they lose other night? To, was it Leeds? We made that up. No, I think they... Oh, I don't know. They might have done 2-1, I think. Yes, I think they did. Um, I'm going to go 1-1. Again, I was thinking the exact same as that. <laughs> I think it's going to be a draw, so one one for me. Both, both I'd, I'd the score. we've got a really, I mean, we've got Palace away, then we've got Fulham at home and West Brom at home. Chances for three points. And I mean, both I'm going to put my neck out and say nine points and about 12 by the end of it. Can okay, you'd be overtaking Man United, <laughs> Josh? <laughs> West Brom versus Man U, what do you think? Um, I mean, I'm tempted to say 1 1 again just so I remember what score I went for in all games. Um, I said when we played them at Old Trafford that they have no business being in this league, that they're terrible. Um, and, and we scraped a 1 0 after they should have had a penalty. Um, so I'm gonna say they're a great team. Um, they've got every chance of staying up, and United will win 4 1. Ooh, ballsy. I'm going to say 1-0 West Brom. Ooh. Don't know, just got a feeling Big Sam's going to start turning it on now and uh, getting a couple of scrape-by wins. I think they're going to take a scalp at United. Well, it's, they're at home, aren't they? So. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Luke? West, West Brom nil, Man United 3. I think West Brom are the worst team in the league. I think they'll finish bottom. Allardyce has done worse than um, I'm about, I'm about to say Ramon Vega. He were a defender for Watford like 20 years. <laughs> he has done Slavin Yeah, he Ramon has done as well. Just in life, <laughs> he's not had his new manager bounce. And like I say, if anything, they've gone backwards. They've had a few batterings. They look rubbish, really. Um, yeah, United don't need to. I don't think they'll need to do much at all to go there and smash them. Yeah, I think I'm going to put me back at. I don't think Allardyce will be there at the end of the season. No, I don't. I don't think it, he'll get I think it, he'll walk. Yeah, I agree. I think he'll quit and literally let like two million pounds slide just to not have that go on his record. I really yeah. do. I never, I never went down. I never got relegated. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's how he talks, but it is now. Yeah. <laughs> now he's not been in management for the last three years. That's how he talks. He's going to become West Brom manager when that happens. Ramon Vega. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do now? Let me have a look. Final I thing for end of episode. Presenter. We need to know. He looks like a, a presenter on, you know, like one of the, the foreign channels that... I'll tell you exactly. He was, a, he was a Swiss footballer who played 64 games for Spurs. I yeah. don't remember him playing. Yeah, that. I remember him being at Spurs. Oh. 18 games for Celtic. 27 for Watford, obviously the period I remember so well, up until 2002. He's got 23 caps for Switzerland. Um, Not bad, then. Probably better than Allardyce and he's playing great. In October 2015, he stood as a FIFA presidential candidate. And there we go, that's your Ramon Vega podcast. <laughs> I had... Um... Just another fun Ramon Vega fact. I had 27 Ramon Vega swaps in the 1997. Get him on the podcast. Ramon <laughs> Vega, if you're listening, hit us up. Hashtag get the non Street Fighter Vega on the podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have been Pine of Pine. Make sure you join us next week for another amazing guest. See you then. Bye. Bye. Why aren't we saying who guest is? Pie in a pie. Pie in a